One of the issues with stepping through in a loop like this is that it's a bit difficult to keep track of where I'm at as I'm stepping through each of the data structures. So if I just step through the iterable items themselves, then I don't have any idea which index number I am on. So an alternative to this is to, rather than stepping through the items itself, step through the index numbers using the range function. So what I can do is step through the row numbers, the row index numbers in the range from zero to the length of the list. The length of the list is three. So if I don't put the beginning of the range, it'll assume zero. So it'll go zero colon three. And remember that in Python, it doesn't do the last number that's listed. So it will actually do the zeroth item to the second item, which is in fact the three rows that I want. If I print what the iterable item is, I'm going to get not the row, but actually the number, the index number of the row. If I want to print the row itself, I have to reference it according to the index of the actual data structure itself by putting the name of the list and then the row number. The inner loop then, if I am, let's say, on the second row, I have to say for column in range from zero to the length of data item two. Okay, data item two is four items long. So that means it'll go from zero colon four. It will not do the last item. So that means it'll step through zero, one, two, and three, which is all of the items in this row. So column will range from zero up to three. And then I want it to print the item that is in row two and then the column will increment 0, 1, 2, and 3, like I did right here. If I put these two loops together, the outer loop and the inner loop, then I'm going to end up with code like this. And in this case, because the row number is available to me, since I am indexing the index number, I can print the row number, and then I'll be able to keep track of which row I'm on. Let's go ahead and try that code. First, let's step through the indices of the outer list. When I'm on row zero, I get the list that is included in the first item of the outer list. Then when I do row one, I get the second item and then the third item. If I set the row to be row two, which would be this one right here, then I can step through each of the items from zero to the end of row two. That'll be items zero, one, two, and three. And I'm gonna have it print what column I'm talking about. So row two, column zero is negative 99. Then column one is zero, column two is 45, column three is zero, just as I see here. And if I combine the two, then the value of row will not be fixed at two like I've done here, but rather the value of row will change starting at zero and working its way up to three. And so here I get a listing of all of the numbers, but this time because I iterated through the index numbers, I have them available to use to print or to use in calculations or any other sort of use that I may need to have for the index numbers. I get the same numbers in the same order as I got when I directly iterated through the list of lists, but I have a little more information if I do it this way. 